I married a guy I knew most of my life. We knew each other in high school and even went to prom together. But little did I know, I did not know him at all. I will call my now ex-husband, Dirty Chad. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. With Bloody Happy Hour. And we are bringing to you Dirty Chad. Get it on patreon.com slash bloody happy hour exclusively for all the details and all the red flags. Caroline's finally telling her story. My truth. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. The Waco History Podcast is sponsored by Brotherwell Brewing on Historic Bridge Street in Waco. Cross the Brazos and Waco. Welcome to the Waco History Podcast. We're going to air for you uh, over the next few months a, a special series of Waco History Living Stories. Uh, these were segments that were originally aired on KWBU here in Waco. Uh, they were produced by the Institute for Oral History editor, Michelle Holland, and narrated by two fabulous narrators, uh, Louis Mazze and Kim Patterson. And so these highlight oral histories from the collection of the Institute for Oral History at Baylor University, which I direct, which has been around since 1970 and has over a thousand interviews related to Waco and McLennan County history. And we're happy to highlight those here. On this uh, Living Stories vignette, uh, we learn about restaurant sit-ins, an important part of the civil rights movement that you all know nationally, but it had a local angle as well. Then the night came alive with gunfire. He knew that at last it'd been found. This is Living Stories, featuring voices from the collections of the Baylor University Institute for Oral History. I'm Kim Patterson. In the early 1960s, many Southerners, fed up with racial discrimination, were participating in restaurant sit-ins, hoping to change the status quo. Robert Cogswell of Austin, a social justice activist, recalls taking part in the movement in Houston. It was customary for um, black people who were demonstrating to have a token white among them to show that they weren't exclusivist, and I was uh, often the token white. My activism had to do with uh, a small group of youth in the NAACP who uh, challenged the idea that Houston restaurants were already integrated. We spent our Saturdays driving around to restaurants and walking in, sitting down, and not being served. We received a lot of responses that bordered on the absurd. A waitress would ignore us for a long time and then come to our table. In one case, uh, the waitress said to me, are your friends Africans? And uh, it developed that uh, if they were Africans, she was willing to serve them, but if they were American blacks, she was not. In another case, uh, I went into a restaurant with uh, a young man who was a, uh, in a pre-medical program in the University of Houston. He was well-dressed and clean-cut looking young man. And we sat down at a table and there was a booth near us, which contained a drunk old man who was abusing the waitress verbally, using language that uh, neither I nor my friend would ever use, telling her in no uncertain terms that he would um, like to be having sex with her. And uh, the waitress was polite to him and served him politely and refused to serve us because my friend was black. Arthur Fred Joe was a spearhead in the integration of Waco restaurants. He explains an early sit-in on the old Dallas Highway. So I sat there for three hours in this restaurant and uh, refused. But the, they didn't have the volume of trade that I thought that we could march in and sit in to hurt their business. See, my angle was to hurt you in your pocketbook. Right. And this is what the program was all about. If you couldn't hurt them in their pocketbooks, you wasn't doing nothing, no good, not as far as the civil rights concern. Joe describes his first victorious sit-in at a restaurant on Austin Avenue, where he went during his break from work. Some said, don't you go home this morning for breakfast. Go there. 
I just drove my car up and parked and got and went in there. I sat there, and they kept walking by me, these little waitresses. So I took a newspaper in with me. And all this way, we I started my movement. You always have something to read, so it wouldn't just you just wouldn't look stupid. Restaurant sit-ins such as these were instrumental in the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which ended legally sanctioned racial segregation in the United States. Thanks for listening to the Waco History Podcast. Like what you heard? Subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes so we can reach more listeners. You can find show notes and info on every episode at wacohistorypodcast.com and more info on Waco's past at wacohistory.org. Our theme music, used with permission, is Cross the Brazos at Waco, performed by the late Billy Walker. For more info on Billy's music, go to billywalker.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. This has been a Rogue Media Network production. I married a guy I knew most of my life. We knew each other in high school and even went to prom together. But little did I know, I did not know him at all. I will call my now ex-husband, Dirty Chad. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. With Bloody Happy Hour. And we are bringing to you Dirty Chad. Get it on patreon.com slash bloody happy hour exclusively for all the details and all the red flags. Caroline's finally telling her story. My truth. I'm Hank. You might remember me from a show called King of the Hill. Check out Ma, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. These boys ain't rap, but they are funny. Find the Ma podcast anywhere you get your podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. I tell you what. <laughs> hmm.